say, Murr, I'm sorry I missed the whole page of your copy last night, but I doubt if anybody noticed. <laughs> when I realized I was running short, I had lived an editorial. Yeah, that was really quick thinking, Ted. An editorial on why stewardesses should wear tighter skirts. It's a simple matter of safety, Murr. <laughs> Loose clothing can get caught in machinery. <laughs> what are you working on, Mary? Oh, it's, it's nothing, Ted. It's nothing. Oh, come on, what no, is Ted, it? Ted, really, it's nothing. Come on. No. Come on. No. <laughs> it ripped. <laughs> Keep your secret. Nobody tells me anything around here anyway. Ted, it's not a secret. It's just a course in writing I'm taking. Writing? That's taking a step backward, isn't it? <laughs> no, Ted, not at all. Well, all I want to do is learn to write a decent paragraph, you yeah, know? I understand. <laughs> Possibly work up to a short piece of copy once in a while. Maybe a full-length news story. Sure. You know, maybe even sell a couple of articles to some of the newspapers. Maybe place a few short stories in some of the better magazines, you know? After which, if an idea for a novel came to me, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe a couple more novels, a book of the month. A bestseller, <laughs> a little recognition, a few prizes, all of the prizes. <laughs> or maybe just write a decent paragraph. <laughs> I wanted to be a journalist once. My student days, I was always on the paper. Where was that, Ted? Obedient school? <laughs> I covered sports. They used to call me Scoop Baxter. <laughs> That's a newspaper term, Mary. Yeah, Ted, I know. Well, I took a writing course once. But an anchor man doesn't have time to fritter away on writing. Cronkite does. Yeah, that's right, he does, doesn't he? He writes a lot of his own copy. Does? Boy, can you imagine writing and broadcasting? I mean, boy, what a satisfaction that must be. Yeah, two paychecks. <laughs> you know, most of the big ones write copy, Ted. Well... I could write if I wanted to. The only reason I never wrote before this is because, well, it just never occurred to me. That's what you said about coming in out of the rain. <laughs> Murray, you don't suppose that we may have put an idea in Ted's head, do you? Don't worry. If we did, it'll die of loneliness. <laughs> hey, it's airtime. What's the matter, am I the only one who watches our show? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. I was just doing uh, some writing. Was... Oh, that's lovely. I like everyone in my newsroom to have a hobby. <laughs> Aren't you going to watch the news? Lou, I wrote it. The big headline is a drop in soybean prices. So why should I stay here and be bored with my own copy? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Twin Cities. Let's go to press. Flash. The bulls and bears were caught with their pants down today as old man Soybean did a kamikaze. <laughs> Murray did a kamikaze? I didn't write that. On the international front, the UN celebrated an anniversary today, and I'd like to take this moment to honor them with a tribute in verse. Lou, I swear I didn't write any tributes in verse. Well, somebody did it. Hail the towering glass building. Hail the many diplomats. Arabs in their robes and slippers. Dutchmen in their wooden hats. <laughs> Ted did it. Hail the dove with the olive branch. And may his flock increase. Cooing the hymn of brotherhood. And laying an egg of peace. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you can't blame us. All right, who gave him the pencil? <laughs> On the home front, patriotic citizens are making daily sacrifices to meet the fuel shortage. Hang in there, Yanks. Let's tighten our belts and show the world it takes more than a little gas to stop Uncle Sam. <laughs> that does it. I'm gonna go after him. Mr. Grant, you can't. He's on the air. I don't care. No, you can't kill him on the air. You're right. <laughs> Too many witnesses. <laughs> okay. He's got till 7 o'clock.
tent? <laughs> yes, Lou. Ted. Hi, Georgette. Ted. Hi, Lou. Ah. Uh, I want to discuss tonight's broadcast with Ted, so would you excuse us, Georgette, because it may get kind of technical. How do you mean? Oh, uh, it'll mean using certain words you may not be familiar with. Well, that's okay, Lou. She doesn't mind. I mind. I don't. Ted, I really think it would be better if Georgette would excuse us. Uh, well, we're all friends here. What the heck, Lou? Not at the moment. We're not. <laughs> I'll go get you a soda from the machine, Ted. Oh. I think Mr. Grant wants to speak to you alone. Thank you, Georgette. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, how do you feel, big fella? Tonight's show, that was a piece of broadcasting history. <laughs> it was a piece of garbage. It was a disgrace and humiliation to everybody who works in news here and around the world. Granted, it did need a, a little improvement. Where do you get off changing Murray's copy? It was flat, Lou. I didn't change the facts, I just jazzed up the language. Jazzed up. Jazzed up. Jazzed up? <laughs> Ted, you do not change the wording of a direct quote. And I do not believe that the Queen of England calls the French ambassador the dude from Frogtown. <laughs> My anchor man does not write copy. I won't have it. Well, the big ones do it, Lou. <laughs> I see. I'm going to have to make something clear to you that I thought you already understood. You're not a big one. <laughs> so knock it off, because if you try it again, I'll break your tongue. <laughs> disturbing you. Uh, no, it's just I'm not used to having callers at, uh, what, what time is it, anyway? Quarter past the 11 o'clock news. I told you we shouldn't just drop in. Ted, we shouldn't have just dropped in. I'm so sorry. Uh, Georgette, it's all right. See, that's what I said. <laughs> I like your hat, Mary. <laughs> I'm not wearing it for the appearance, Ted. My hair was dirty. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be simpler just to wash it? <laughs> 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 I'm so sorry to intrude, Mary, but Ted said he had to see you. And when Ted makes up his mind to do something, it's like trying to grab a comet by the tail. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> what Listen, Mary, uh, can I do for you? What did you think of tonight's show? I wrote most of the news myself. Yeah, I know. Wasn't it incredible? That's the word for it. <laughs> First, I'm a perfectionist, Mary. Good as it was, I felt it needed a little improvement. Now, I'm not one to put much stock in writing schools, but Ted I... Ted feels writing is one of those things you have to be born with, like a deep voice or gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how much they can teach me. But uh, since you recommend this course of yours so highly, Mary... Ah, uh, no, wait a minute, Ted. I did not recommend the course. No, uh-uh. Ted, for you to take this course would be a big mistake. What harm would, would it be if I sat in on a few sessions? Ted, look, the course started two weeks ago. I mean, you'd never catch up. Mary, I'm hardly a beginner. You know, I, I've had newspaper experience. They used to call him Stu Baxter. <laughs> Ted, 
Ted, taking a course like this would be a waste of your natural gift. What do you mean? You're a star. You've got talent. I mean, to take a beginner's course like this would just be a step backward. Yeah, well, that's what I, what I told her. And he's absolutely right. You're J Ted. <laughs> I mean, it would take up most of his evenings, and you certainly don't want that, do you, George? I just want what's best for Ted's career, though. Yeah, me too. How many evenings would it take up? A lot, a lot of evenings, Ted, so many. No, 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 Ted. You just go on doing what you're doing so very well. And I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Thank you for your time, Mary. And I'm so sorry we had to bother you, but I couldn't stop my crazy comment here. Oh, no, that's all right. <laughs> All's well that ends well, Good right? Night, Good night. Mary, I've got to take that course. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Yes, I've really got to take Why it, Mary. Why do you have to take Mary, the course? Mary, Georgette looks up to me, but how can I have any self-respect if all I do is read what somebody writes for me? If you were me, Mary, would you have any self-respect? <laughs> Gee, Ted, I wish you'd put it another way. <laughs> Gotta take that course. I'll see you in class tomorrow night. Costs a hundred dollars. <laughs> if I decide to take the course. <laughs> I saved a place for you. Uh, well, no, that's all right. I sit right here in the back. Oh, I switched it. These things are more fun if you have a friend to sit with. Yeah, but Ted, I don't like to sit up front. It's, it's too conspicuous. Fun. Oh, get a load of that. The people that think they can write. Where does old Granny sit? <laughs> right there, Ted. She's the teacher. <laughs> well, maybe you better introduce me, Mary, as a courtesy to her. Mrs. Malone, uh, yes. this is Ted Baxter. He's joining the class. Oh, your face looks sort of familiar, Mr. Baxter. The reason it's familiar is because I'm Ted Baxter, the anchor man. Isn't that exciting? My father was an old Navy man, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Malone, uh, Ted is in television. Oh, I, I am sorry. <laughs> You see, I don't own a television. What does an anchor man do, Mr. Baxter? I broadcast the news. Really? I see. My nephew did that the summer that after he graduated. You know, his family wanted him to get a job, but you know, youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> so I think before we begin, that I better introduce Mr. Baxter, who's just joined our class. Okay. When this course started, Mr. Baxter, we each stood and told a little bit about ourselves. Would you be willing to do that now? Well, <laughs> I'm not the kind of a guy that likes to blow his own horn. <laughs> the only thing I hate worse than the guy standing up there reading off a list of endless triumphs. <laughs> so I'll just... Uh, Yield the floor to one of my closest and dearest friends who knows me better than anyone, Mary Richards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Ted is the anchor man with uh, stand up, WJM stand up, stand up. Uh, TV. He's uh, been with us um, many years. Tell me, tell me about the Teddy Awards. Uh, he won the uh, Teddy Award. For excellence in broadcasting. For excellence in uh, broadcasting, and uh, that's about high it. High school? High school? Yes, he went to high school. <laughs> he worked uh, on the high school paper. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Richards. Uh, now then, the last me, time that we... Excuse me if I we... just have a word. <laughs> <clears throat> Look, uh, while I'm in this class, I'm a student. Just like the rest of you. I mean, no better, no worse. Okay, maybe a little better, because I've had a little more experience. But I still put my pants on one leg at a time, just like the rest of you. Well, <laughs> some of you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> well, thank you. The last time uh, we were discussing the uses of alliteration, 
and I thought that it might be helpful for, for the moment to consider this passage from Herman Melville. <laughs> Kill a lot of that name. <laughs> Whenever I find myself growing grim about the mouth, Whenever it is a damp, drizzly November in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> drizzly November in my soul. <laughs> Murray can write better than that. <laughs> Herman Melville is one of Mrs. Malone's favorite writers. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes. I don't know which one you are, Herman, but no hard feelings, okay, fellas? <laughs> Hey, uh, just between us, Mayor, uh, how's Ted doing in class? It's hard to tell. He hasn't written anything yet. Now, how come? Well, Ted's first day, the teacher wrote on the board, write what you know. <laughs> looked at that and frowned, and he hasn't stopped frowning. <laughs> well, how long can he keep that up? Uh, I don't know. Next week, we both have to read aloud a vivid description of an unforgettable experience. I took this writing course once from this hard-nosed old guy. On the first day, he said, if you stay with me, you'll do nothing but write, write, write seven days a week. Then you'll rip out everything you've written and rewrite it, and rewrite it again. I'll give you constant criticism and little praise so that you'll curse the day you ever saw a typewriter. If that appeals to you, then stick around. Wow. And you know something? I bet he was a great teacher. Could be. I never went back. <laughs> well, listen, if you'd like, I'd be glad to lend you an excerpt from my memoirs of the Korean War, tentatively titled, Hell in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I bet every guy in the service started a novel. Oh, yeah, you wrote one too, Lou. Uh, what was yours called? Mm, what difference does it make? No, what was it called, Mr. Grant? Too many foxholes, not enough love. <laughs> not a bad title. They didn't buy it, though, huh? Yeah, Lou, uh, why'd they turn it down? Oh, well, they said it had too many foxholes and not enough love. <laughs> to work on your story. Oh, please. no, no, the story's all finished. Once I got the idea, I was just fine. That's the hard part, isn't it? Yeah. Ted says he's got his all written in his head, except for the idea. <laughs> you mean he hasn't finished it yet? Mary, he hasn't even started, and he's been at it a week. He's driving me crazy. <laughs> Is he writing it at your house? Why? I have a den. Ted says a writer needs a den. He bought a smoking jacket and a pipe and put his typewriter in my den. And every night, he puts in a clean sheet of paper and sits with his hands on the keyboard, whimpering. <laughs> you want some more coffee? No, thank you, Georgia. Ted, hi. Hi, Mary. Hi, honey. Hi. Mary, you've got to help me. You've got to write my paper for me. Yeah, what are you talking about? I can't stand being embarrassed in the class. I'm a celebrity. And if I'm embarrassed, the station's embarrassed. You owe it to the station, Mary. Oh, no, I don't, Ted. Mary, the class is tomorrow night. I haven't written a word. No soap. Mary, can I help it if I flunked out English as a kid because I had to work nights? No good, Ted. Try again. I'll pay you. Better yet, I'll give you a mention on the news. I'll work you in during the weather forecast. Hurricane Mary. Ted, <laughs> I am not going to write your story for you. All right, then, I'll write about this. I'll tell them how you turned down a buddy in desperation. Oh, come on, Ted. All you need is an idea. And I'm sure you'll come up with something. Mary's already finished, Ted. You did? Mm-hmm. What's yours about, Mary? Well, it's about something that happened to me when I was 17. Oh, boy, another teenage reminiscence. Ted, please tell us, Mary. I love stories about being 17. Well, OK, I'll give you the general idea. Um, when I was 17, I had a crush on the class president. He seemed older and really mature, and I was just 
so hoping that he would invite me to the graduation dance. But he didn't. Instead, I was asked by a shy, immature guy who didn't dance and didn't have a tuxedo. Boy, you must have been a real loser. <laughs> Please, Ted, I think it's sad and beautiful. Go on, Mary. Well, anyway, I accepted Edwin's invitation because I figured that way I'd get to go to the dance and maybe Bob would notice me. Anyway, it was a beautiful spring night, and I had on my first strapless formal. <laughs> I bet it was white. Of course. And when Edwin picked me up, boy, I mean, I could practically hear the music. So can I. <laughs> <laughs> Except we didn't get to go right to the dance. You didn't? No. On our way, we saw a dog that had been hit by a car. He wasn't badly hurt, you know, but Edwin insisted that we take him to the vet, so... We did, me and my formal gown. Poor Mary. Poor dog. <laughs> did he pull through? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. But we got to the dance really late. And uh, instead of telling Edwin that it was all right, I sulked. He had ruined my evening. He didn't mean to. <laughs> anyway, he said that he was sorry that I was upset, but that it really didn't matter to him whether or not people liked him. That what mattered was whether or not he liked himself. Boy, and that's when I knew who the mature one really was. Who? <laughs> No, I'm really pretty confident. I mean, I'm almost eager. <laughs> oh, boy, not me. Good evening, class. Well, let's see who's scheduled to read tonight. Uh, Miss Richards and Mr. Baxter. Mr. Baxter, I think we'll start with you, please. Good luck. This isn't a very long speech. I had a busy week. News stories breaking every hour. Merit isn't measured by the word, Mr. Baxter. It's what you have to say. Please read it. <clears throat> Storm-tossed waves pounded the beach in a blizzard shrieked round my ears on the night of my high school graduation dance. <laughs> sure, maybe I couldn't afford a tuxedo because I was saving every penny to go to veterinary school. <laughs> that was no reason for my date, Edwina, to sneer at me. At last, I reached her house. One look at Edwina in her first strapless gown, and I realized who the mature one really was. <laughs> Suddenly, a cry filled the air. One of her father's prize stallions had gone into labor. <laughs> Tossing aside thoughts of the dance, I, I rushed to its side. Boil water, I yelled. Lots of it. <laughs> Through the night, I knelt beside that animal, and at dawn, I saw my reward. Six brand new baby horses. <laughs> of my life. Who cares? I replied, I love myself, the end. <laughs> and now, we'll hear from Miss Richards, please. Thank you. I have, uh, Never been so happy to tell a story in my life. <laughs> uh, this is a story about somebody so insensitive, yes, insensitive, Ted Baxter, <laughs> that he would use part of a person's life to get a crummy three minutes of attention. <laughs> this is somebody so, look at me, Ted. <laughs> so insensitive and who has reached such a low point that he would steal a story. That was one of the most important moments of my life, Ted, and you, you made it into a, a horse story.
story. <laughs> well, you've gone too far. I'm going to get some things off my chest that I have been saving for years. Nobody move! <laughs> Say, Murr, I'm sorry I missed the whole page of your copy last night, but I doubt if anybody noticed. <laughs> when I realized I was running short, I had lived an editorial. Yeah, that was really quick thinking, Ted. An editorial on why stewardesses should wear tighter skirts. It's a simple matter of safety, Murr. <laughs> Loose clothing can get caught in machinery. <laughs> what are you working on, Mary? Oh, it's, it's nothing, Ted. Oh, come on, what no, is Ted, it? Dad, really, it's nothing. Come on. No. Come on. No. <laughs> Get ripped. <laughs> Keep your secret. Nobody tells me anything around here anyway. Dad, it's not a secret. It's just a course in writing I'm taking. Writing? That's taking a step backward, isn't it? <laughs> no, Ted, not at all. No, all I want to do is learn to write a decent paragraph, yeah, you know? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> possibly work up to a short piece of copy once in a while. Maybe a full-length news story. Sure. You know, maybe even sell a couple of articles to some of the newspapers. Maybe place a few short stories in some of the better magazines, you know. After which, if an idea for a novel came to me, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe a couple more novels, a book of the month, a bestseller, <laughs> a little recognition. A few prizes, all of the prizes. <laughs> or maybe just write a decent paragraph. <laughs> I want to be a journalist once. My student days, I was always on the paper. Where was that, Ted? Obedient school? <laughs> I covered sports. They used to call me Scoop Baxter. <laughs> That's a newspaper term, Mary. Yeah, Ted, I know. Well, I took a writing course once. But an anchor man doesn't have time to fritter away on writing. Cronkite does. Yeah, that's right, he does, doesn't he? He writes a lot of his own copy. Does? Boy, can you imagine writing and broadcasting? I mean, boy, what a satisfaction that must be. Yeah, two paychecks. <laughs> well, most of the big ones write copy, Ted. Well... I could write if I wanted to. The only reason I never wrote before this is because, well, it just never occurred to me. That's what you said about coming in out of the rain. <laughs> Murray, you don't suppose that we may have put an idea in Ted's head, do you? Don't worry. If we did, it'll die of loneliness. <laughs> hey, it's air time. What's the matter, am I the only one who watches our show? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Grant. I was just doing uh, some writing. Oh, that's lovely. I like everyone in my newsroom to have a hobby. <laughs> Aren't you going to watch the news? Lou, I wrote it. The big headline is a drop in soybean prices. So why should I stay here and be bored with my own copy? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. Twin Cities. Let's go to press. Flash. The bulls and bears were caught with their pants down today as old man Soybean did a kamikaze. <laughs> Murray did a kamikaze? I didn't write that. On the international front, the UN celebrated an anniversary today, and I'd like to take this moment to honor them with a tribute in verse. Lou, I swear I didn't write any tributes in verse. Well, somebody did it. Hail the towering glass building. Hail the many diplomats. Arabs in their robes and slippers. Dutchmen in their wooden hats. Ted did it. 
Hail the dove with the olive branch, and may his flock increase, cooing the hymn of brotherhood. And laying an egg of peace. <laughs> Mr. Grant, you can't blame us. All right, who gave him the pencil? <laughs> On the home front, patriotic citizens are making daily sacrifices to meet the fuel shortage. Hang in there, Yanks. Let's tighten our belts and show the world it takes more than a little gas to stop Uncle Sam. <laughs> that does it. I'm gonna go after him. Mr. Grant, you can't. He's on the air. I don't care. No, you can't kill him on the air. You're right. <laughs> Too many witnesses. <laughs> okay. He's got till seven o'clock. <laughs> Ted? <laughs> yes, Lou? Ted? Hi, Georgette. Ted. Hi, Lou. Uh, I want to discuss tonight's broadcast with Ted, so would you excuse us, Georgette, because it may get kind of technical. How do you mean? Uh, uh, it'll mean using certain words you may not be familiar with. Well, that's OK, Lou. She doesn't mind. I mind. <laughs> I don't. Ted, I really think it would be better if George Ed would excuse us. Uh, well, we're all friends here. What the heck, Lou? Not at the moment. We're not. I'll go get you a soda from the machine, Ted. Oh. I think Mr. Grant wants to speak to you alone. Thank you, George Ed. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, how do you feel, big fella? Tonight's show, that was a piece of broadcasting history. <laughs> it was a piece of garbage. <laughs> it was a disgrace and humiliation to everybody who works in news here and around the world. Granted, it did need a little improvement. Where do you get off changing Murray's copy? It was flat, Lou. I didn't change the facts, I just jazzed up the language. Jazzed up. Jazzed up. Jazzed up? <laughs> Ted. You do not change the wording of a direct quote. And I do not believe that the Queen of England calls the French ambassador the dude from Frogtown. <laughs> My anchor man does not write copy. I won't have it. Well, the big ones do it, Lou. <laughs> I see.